Hello friends, welcome back. My name is Thomas and in this video I'm going to show you how to connect Chlorine to a ClojureScript REPL. If you want to follow along with this video, that's awesome. I have two videos which show you how I've configured Chlorine on my local machine, so you can go check those out. I'll have a link above and then I'll also have a link in the description below. There are a ton of different ClojureScript REPLs out there. Uh, the ones that we're going to focus on are the ones that are mainly highlighted in the Chlorine documentation, which includes Lumo, Plonk, and Shadow CLJS. These are also some of the more popular ones in general. Now I'm not going to show you how to install each one of them here. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put links in the description below and you can go check out how to install those. And again, you don't need to install all three of these REPLs they're not needed. Usually you're just going to be using the one that you're into. If your project is using Shadow CLJS, then work with that one. If you're just trying to do some transformations or you want to explore some closure script, use Lumo or Plonk. You don't need to use both of them because they both pretty much do similar things. And with that, let's go over to the code. I already have Lumo, Plonk, and Shadow CLJS installed and set up on my machine. So I'm just going to start with Lumo and we'll go see what that looks like. So as you can see on my left hand side what we have is my terminal and then on my right hand side we have the atom editor and then on the right left hand side what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start by running a Lumo REPL which can just be done with Lumo space dash n and then we'll give it a port and this is just random but it'll be 3322. Press enter and we see that we have a closure script REPL running. Now I can go over to Adam tell Chlorine to connect to the ClojureScript REPL by opening up the command palette. And what I pressed there was meta Y, press enter, and it'll tell me that I've connected successfully. Now all we want to do is just see that this connection actually works by seeing if we can send forms to our ClojureScript REPL. So if I do meta B, I should have three, great. And then if I did something like meta B on this, it would evaluate it and I would return that. And then if I did something like actually running main, it would return hello world and then nil. And then what I just did was cleared up all of the inline notifications by pressing the escape key. All right, so that's how you connect a Lumo REPL. So we're going to disconnect from that one there. And before we actually disconnect, I'm also going to clear the console, which is meta K, good thing to remember. And now I'll show you how to run a plonk REPL. So that's P-L-A-N-C-K, and then you'll do dash N, and we'll do 3323, just to make it a little bit different from the Lumo one. Uh, press Enter, and that will start our plonk closure script REPL. Now we can go back into Atom, meta Y to connect, and instead of 3322, we're gonna change it to 3323. Press Enter. And we see that once again, we are now connected to a REPL. Let's see if we can evaluate some forms. Looks good. Let's do a function and we'll also actually call that function. Hello world, nil. Awesome. So again, for these, I'm gonna clear the notifications. And the last REPL that I'm gonna show you is how to connect to Shadow CLJS. So what you haven't seen till now is that this app.cljs file is a part of a shadow-cljs project. And I just created this uh, quickly. It's just a lightweight little project. In the source, you just have this app file, which is right here. There are no tests and it's a basic configuration. And I'll have a link to where you can actually see what this project looks like in the description below. But the whole idea is in my terminal, I have moved myself into the root of this app right here. Now we'll start the shadow CLJS REPL, and by that we do shadow-CLJS watch app. App is the name of the build, which is here, and again, all this will be available to you. And watch is what's going to be running the application, and it's gonna start a socket REPL for us. So. Press enter there. And again, you're gonna make sure that you run this command from the root of app. And this will take a moment to start. Great, the build has completed. So now what you're gonna do, and this is an important step, you're gonna start out by opening up your localhost 8280. This is where your app is actually running. 
So when we click on that, a browser will open and we see we have 8280. And everything looks good. Let's just double check and look inside the console. Yep, everything looks good in there. And with that, we can actually connect to the REPL now. So I'm just gonna close this sidebar here because we don't really need that right now. Again, we're gonna do command Y. And you're gonna notice something. We have 49909, where before we had 3323. Where does this port actually come from? Chlorine is pretty smart. And what it does is, what Shadow CLJS does is it records the port that the socket is running on in dot shadow CLJS. And then you can see it here in socket REPL port. So that's where chlorine is actually getting that socket REPL from. And it'll auto populate. And if it doesn't auto populate for you, I can show you what might be happening in that scenario. So what we do now is once again, all we're gonna do is command Y. And now we have the port already typed in for us. So we don't need to do anything. We press enter and we see that it's connected. We have one more step to do, and this is run connect embedded. So that one's gonna be right here, and we can just click on that. And once it's done, and if it's connected successfully, you'll get this in the little connected to Shadow CLJS target app, and you'll get a prompt right here. Now we can actually try to see if we can run something. All right, perfect, so that's still working. Let's run this one, and let's run this again. Great. Now, there's something interesting that happens when you actually run the hello world command or the main command, because what this is doing is essentially console logging hello world. If you were to open up the app and open up the browser console, we will see that there is an additional hello world here. And this is the one that we just called. So let's see that again. What happens if I run this again? And again, we open up here and we see another hello world. And what that means is that your closure script, when you're running it against this Shadow CLJS REPL, is actually running or being evaluated inside of the browser. This is neat because when you have a closure script REPL that's connected to a browser, you can do lots of exciting things like query the DOM or run JavaScript. And this really empowers your workflow and makes it more efficient overall. And before I leave you, I just want to provide a little bit of context as to when you would actually use a closure script REPL. Because if you come from front-end development in the JavaScript world, you may be thinking to yourself, well, if I have HMR and I have live browser refresh and all those great things like that, that's a pretty fast development workflow. Why do I actually need the REPL? Really what, what it's about for me is the closure script REPL comes into play when I want to do things like exploration or I'm transforming data. It's not necessarily something that I'm going to do when I'm building my UI per se, but that's just one way that you can use the REPL and there's all kinds of interesting things that you can get into. That's everything for this video. I hope you found it helpful. If so, give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please feel free to subscribe to the channel. That's everything for today. I'll see you later.